I have not done one of these videos before, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Hi there, uh, my name is David Dragoning. I am a composer, producer and video editor based in the UK. And I thought I'd uh, take a moment to do a little breakdown of a MIDI mock-up I did recently. How do you make a super realistic sounding orchestral MIDI mock-up? Um, it's a question I've been asked by some of my followers and it's something I'm gonna do my best to kind of explain how I go about it. So I made a MIDI mock-up of Princess Leia's theme from Star Wars, uh, composed by John Williams. And I thought I'd do a little breakdown as to kind of how I went about achieving a realistic orchestral sound with this one. I was trying to kind of blend the sound from three different recordings I was referencing for this. I didn't have the sheet music for it, I just had, you know, I was just doing it by ear. I had the recording from the original movie soundtrack. I had uh, the Boston Pops recording, I think from the 90s possibly. And more recently, uh, the recording that was done uh, with the Berlin Philharmonic, I think it was. And I kind of, you know, I was borrowing bits from all three recordings in terms of the overall sound of the piece. But I think really it was like the original recording and the Boston one, which were my main uh, reference for this track. Um, so let's dive in and uh, have a look at uh, what I did in Logic. Okay, so let's delve into the project. I've mocked this one up in uh, Logic Pro. That is my DAW of choice. Um, I'm using a variety of pretty good sample libraries. For this project, I'm using my own personal orchestral template. Uh, it's a pretty big template. Uh, I think it's about, let's have a look. Uh, it's over 500 tracks in total, but obviously not all of those are, are, are triggered, um, but it's a pretty hefty session. One uh, key thing for me was that I wanted to be able to match the tempo of the original uh, 1977 recording. So I actually started off by bringing that uh, recording in as a reference track so I could kind of go through and plot out my tempo changes and match them exactly to the original recording. Um, that's always very handy, I think, and it's it's something that adds a, a great deal of realism uh, to any orchestral track like this. There is a natural kind of ebb and flow that you get from a from a real organic uh, live orchestra that you, if you just kind of you know stick at a solid eighty BPM for the whole thing, it's going to sound good, but it's not going to sound um, particularly realistic in terms of the way that it plays. And this piece, I mean, it, it ebbs and flows like all over the place. It really does like it kind of. It sort of starts at about 76 BPM and like at its slowest point it's down to like 40, it's it's all over the place. Um, which is great, and that's classic John Williams, you know, he lets he likes to kind of like really hold off on those um, big crescendos that kind of you know really build the anticipation so that when you get there it's like, oh yeah. And then yeah, aside from the um, tempo uh, changes, I think probably the most important thing to get a realistic orchestral sound is the dynamics and expression and using those uh, in combination to get a really uh, realistic sound from your instrument. Uh, the sample libraries I'm using, I'm favoring in this one, uh, are CSS strings. I'm using Spitfire Appassionata uh, legato strings. For the brass, it's uh, the majority of it is uh, 8DO uh, century brass. And for the woodwinds, there's uh, all kinds. Uh, I mean, I'm using a mixture of orchestral tools, uh, Berlin woods. Uh, I'm using some 8DO virtuoso uh, solo recordings. Um, yeah, a whole mix of things, really. So I'm going to step through some of these libraries, uh, just so you can hear kind of how they sound. And we're going to start off at the top of the piece, the solo flute there, which is from orchestral tools. And it's the Berlin woodwinds soloists. Uh, first soloist, and this is uh, first solo flute. The legato is actually really nice on this. You can get some, you can do some pretty fast runs on it, and you know it's very expressive and has a nice kind of swell towards the end of it. This one's followed up by another Berlin woodwind soloist. This is the solo oboe spot. Again, it's just a very nice legato spot from um, orchestral tools. Uh, 
For the French horn, I'm using two different libraries. To start with, the because um, it's in a slightly higher register, and, and I wanted something that had like a more lyrical, uh, sort of really nice kind of top end to it, but wasn't kind of too shrill. Like the French horn, once you get into the higher register, can start getting kind of really brassy. So I wanted something that had a, like dealt well with the high frequencies, but still had a nice kind of soft uh, sound to it. So I'm using a descant horn patch for that one instead of a traditional French horn. And that one is by Cine Samples, it's the Cine Brass Descant, solo Descant horn. Um, has a really nice quality to it. So I start off with that. By the time we get to the kind of middle section and the um, the horns are kind of taken over the counter melody instead. I'm then using a different horn library, and for that I'm using uh, 8DO Century Solo Brass uh, French Horn. Uh, that's got my own custom uh, microphone mix on it. So the legato strings on this one, uh, again two libraries, uh, which I find work really well together. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been using CSS legatos for a long time, and then Spitfire really recently re uh, released their Appassionata library. It's just got that sizzle, that top end that just cuts through, and it's just it's magical, it really soars. Um, so I'm using that in combination with CSS. So CSS is actually doing the kind of bulk of the work, and then I have Appassionata just as that kind of look sprinkle on the top that just kind of adds a nice kind of gloss to it. One of the other things I wanted to just take a look at as well is just uh, the overall mix on this. Each section, including the kind of longs and shorts, I have uh, a reverb stem, uh, so that's busting out and I'm, I'm, I'm giving each of those uh, I'm actually using for these. Um, I'm actually just using the Logic, um, their uh, space designer. Has some really nice reverbs built into it. The principal one is is a really nice orchestral hall. Um, uh, in terms of mastering, uh, so on the master bus, I've got a few things. Um, first and foremost, I have my channel EQ. It's not doing a huge amount. It's just sort of finessing. It's kind of rolling off the, the lower frequencies below 50 hertz, just nipping out some of the, uh, the the frequencies around the three kilohertz mark, which is just sort of particularly in string libraries where things can get a little bit glassy. Um, I have a stereo spread. It's basically just very very subtle it's just spreading the higher frequencies a little bit more just pushing those out into the stereo field a little bit more I use a logic exciter as well um, again hardly at all it's just a little smidge just to give those higher frequencies a little a little bit more color uh, then we get to the mastering chain and for this uh, and actually for a lot of my orchestral stuff I've been using the Abbey Rhodes TG mastering chain which is from waves audio and it's really nice it's an analog uh, mastering chain emulator it's actually the one that they use in uh, Abbey Road 1 which is you know a very big orchestral stage generally it's uh, gives it a nice kind of balanced sound it's got some nice stereo spreaders in there it just kind of gives it that nice analog uh, quality that you get when you uh, record on some of the big old desks in Abbey Road and then yeah at the end of the chain uh, just a adaptive limiter uh, I'm boosting I'm actually giving it a bit more gain about 1.8 dB uh, I sometimes kind of ride the dynamics of that throughout the piece and I have my output ceiling set to minus 0.2 dB just to make sure there's no clipping. Uh, another little nifty thing I did with this project just to add a little more realism to the recording. So Spitfire's Passion Arsa comes with a noise floor which you can you can dial in to the legato strings and so what I've done I've actually recorded that and created my own audio loop um, so even if I'm not using a passionata, I've actually just got isolated their, their noise floor uh, and I've just just snuck that in there a little bit just to kind of give it a bit more room, real room tone. Um, so yeah, that's it really. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.